Hello everyone and welcome back to my KSP tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. I'm back from vacation now after uh, spending about 10 days off from KSP. Uh, in fact, uh, episodes 2, 3, and 4 of this series were released while I was away and so now I'm coming back trying to remember where I was and I've reconsidered exactly what I wanted to do in this episode because originally I was going to talk about maneuvering and I had a piece of the airplane episode, the airplane basics episode that I still wanted to show I had actually delayed it because that episode was getting too long and so I had originally planned for this to be an episode on maneuvering but after reconsideration, I've decided that what we really need to cover is the rocket equation, which is how you calculate delta V and do all of your flight planning. So all of your planning in KSP is going to be dependent on this one equation. And so I decided that we really need to talk about that. And uh, But uh, just a little uh, note as I try and remember what I'm doing here. We've got this perform visual surveys thing and we've got uh, two locations to cover on that uh, so we've got to take this uh, this in-flight one and then the surface one is a little bit trickier I might have to uh, hold off on that and then we have this scientific data from space around Kerbin I think that's one that I'm going to prioritize first so this is the first one we're going to do and then once we do that one I'm going to aim to start exploring the moon okay but let's go to VAB and talk about the rocket equation so here we are with my first orbital rocket in this series, the one I used to get Jeb into orbit. And what I want to do is calculate the delta V on this thing. But first we need to talk about how rockets work and the uh, rocket equation. So uh, how rockets work is based on the conservation of momentum. And basically the mass and velocity of the spacecraft is going to be equal to the mass and change in velocity of the exhaust. Both of those combined equal to zero and that's conservation momentum. So the faster you can eject the exhaust out, the faster your spacecraft will go for a given amount of mass. Okay, and so if you want to reduce the amount of mass of fuel that you're carrying, what you want to do is shoot it out at a faster velocity. So exhaust velocity is the key to efficiency in a spacecraft. That's basically your fuel efficiency, exhaust velocity, that V sub E in those equations. That's your fuel efficiency. And of course uh, we've talked about delta V and so you see the delta V's in on both sides of the equation. So uh, for all intents and purposes the vo both velocities actually start at zero for our calculations and so the delta V is the total exhaust velocity that ends up shooting out of the nozzle and then the delta V is the change in the spacecraft's velocity as a result of how fast you shot the exhaust out of the nozzle. Now uh, we could get into a lot of things with this and uh, this is all theoretical exhaust velocity because what you need what what's really colliding here because with conservation momentum you have a collision and you calculate the collision and what's really happening is it's the exhaust is colliding with the nozzle and so the shape of the nozzle is really really important to determine how much of the theoretical exhaust velocity you actually capture so so is the chamber and all that stuff so the way the engine is constructed is very very important in terms of whether you get the theoretical maximum that you could get from your fuel but anyway that's all aside because we don't design engines in this game I might talk about that some some future time but for now all we need to do is figure out what the exhaust velocity is so we can figure out our fuel efficiency now how do we do that well if we look at the engines we don't really have a number called exhaust velocity that doesn't exist here what we do have is this engine ISP and ISP is specific impulse and all it is is exhaust velocity divided by 9.81 that's it um, <laughs> uh, why does this exist well the, the only handy thing about this is that it's it's uh, independent of which system you're using it's uh, whether you're using metric or imperial uh, you know whatever units you're using to measure uh, distance because everybody uses seconds to measure time this is measured in seconds so it's handy for that reason alright so um, so it's a sort of a new uh, system independent unit but anyway, it's exhaust velocity divided by 9.81. So pretty much any time you're going to use this number, 
you're going to multiply it by 9.81, okay? And that will give you the exhaust velocity. All right, now the next thing we need to talk about is R, which is your mass ratio. The mass ratio is the other component in this equation, uh, the rocket equation. And what it is, is the mass of each stage when it's full of fuel divided by the mass when it's empty of fuel. Now, as everybody seems to point out, uh, we can get the mass uh, right here. Okay, and so right now we're at 16.8 uh, tons. And one trick you can do in the VAB is just to empty these tanks of fuel. And then... We find that this stage, which we have now emptied of fuel, is 6.8 tons without fuel. Now there are other ways of figuring that out. First of all, in flight you can't do that, obviously, but in flight there's an easier trick in that all you have to do is note how much liquid fuel you have. You see there's 180 units here. Divide that by 90, and that's the number of tons of fuel that you have. So uh, there's 2 tons here. 180 divided by 90 is 2. 180 is divided by 90 is 2. So there's 2 tons in each of these tanks, so there's a total of 10 tons, right? Okay, but... Uh, now we need the use of a calculator and perhaps a notepad. So, if you'll forgive me, I've added two... I, I hesitate to even call them mods. They're the little helper things. They don't change the game in any way. But, but here's calculator. And this is going to be my way of showing uh, what calculations I do. And later on I'll probably use notepad, uh, notes. So there's um, this mod called Calculator and another mod called Notes that I've installed. And all it does is allow me to show you what I'm doing. So the mass ratio of this rocket is 16.8 divided by 6.8. And that is equal to 2.47. Okay, so that's, and always round down by the way, uh, just for safety's sake. So 2.47 is the mass ratio of the first stage. Now we can get the mass ratio of the second stage pretty easily too. Uh, oh, I have to close this. Okay. So second stage is 4.3, and then I know this tank is 2 tons, so when we bring calculator out, I just do 4.3, oops, clear that. 4.3 divided by 2.3 equals... Uh, 1.86. Again, always round down even though this is very close to 1.87 to give yourself some margin. Okay, so those are our two mass ratios. Now, what do we do with that? Well, here's the rocket equation. Okay, and so you see here the rocket equation is the delta V, which is what we're trying to calculate is equal to the specific impulse times 9.81 times the natural logarithm of the R. Natural logarithm is a handy uh, equation. It, it flattens out as you go along so that you get diminishing returns. Basically, uh, you get your best returns on the fuel you carry early on, and then the more fuel you try to add, uh, the less bang for your buck you get, basically is how the equation looks. And so if you uh, actually graph the equation, you'll see that. But we're not going to get into that. Basically, that's, that's the form of the equation. Okay, so let's just calculate the delta V of the first stage of this right from the start. 16.8 divided by 6.8. So that's the full mass divided by the empty mass. And for some reason, while I use calculator, I can't click out here. Uh, that's a little bit annoying. But anyway, 16.8 uh, divided by 6.8 gives us the mass ratio of 2.47. 2.47, we do the ln of 2.47 equals 0.9. And then 0.9, we do multiply by 320. And that gives us uh, 2a9. And then uh, to get the actual exhaust velocity, we still need to multiply by 9.81. And that gives us 2,839 meters per second of delta V. Is that enough to get into orbit? No. 
what do you need to get into orbit around Kerbin? Now, we'll talk about how to calculate the delta V4 maneuvers. And all maneuvers, if you do them ideally, if you do them perfectly, have a very definite amount of delta V that you need in order to make them happen. And so the maneuver to get into orbit around Kerbin uh, is approximately 4,500 meters per second, depending on how your, the thrust to weight ratio of your rocket is and uh, how you do your turn, how you do the pitch maneuver. And so we're talking about about 4,500 meters per second in stock Kerbal Space Program. To transfer to the moon, you need about 850, uh, perhaps as much as 900, depending on where you do it. And then to get into orbit around the moon, you need around 250, just to be conservative. You can probably do it for less, but 250 is conservative to get into orbit around the moon. And then to make your way back from the moon to Kerbin, you need another 250, let's say. So if you were going to do a fly, uh, well, to get into orbit and then return from the moon, not landing, which is uh, probably our next thing to do, you would need the 4,500 to get into uh, orbit around Kerbin, nine, uh, let's say 900 to uh, transfer, so that's 5,400, and another 500 to get into orbit and then make the return. So you're talking about 5,900. So we've got 2,839 in this first stage. Let's call it 2,800. Again, always erring on the conservative side. And let's calculate the upper stage delta V. Okay, so this is the upper stage. And what we had was, oh, can't click out while this thing is 4.3. Okay. So clear all this. 4.3. 4.3 divided by 2.3, which is the empty mass of it, equals mass ratio. And then we say ln of 1.86 equals, okay, so that's the mass ratio multiplied by, this engine is only going to operate in the vacuum. And let me just memorize this, uh, 0.62, okay. Uh, if we look here at the ISP here, the vacuum ISP is 390, which is much better than our base stage ISP, so that's good. That means this engine is more efficient in terms of its use of the propellant. Okay, and I've forgotten the actual number. I suppose. No, there it is. 0.62. Okay, 0.62 multiplied by that ISP, 390 equals uh, 244 multiplied by uh, 9.81 equals 2,393. So we had 2,800 down there, 2,393 up here. So we're, we're pretty close, really. So that's not bad. But first, we, we don't have that contract just yet. We just have the contract to get into orbit and do some science from orbit around Kerbin. So let's take care of that now. We'll talk more about the rocket equation in a bit. Now, I think we've already done the goo stuff in orbit. So let's remove the goo. The goo is 0.3 tons, uh, if you got two of them. And we've got the Science Junior, so we'll just outfit this with the Science Junior this time. And that should be some new science that we get to do in orbit. Uh, this is a cost of 10,402, which is pretty darn expensive. And you see that now that we have a little bit of buffer here, uh, we could get away with much less fuel than we are carrying and maybe we could optimize this a little bit more. Uh, in general the mass ratio that you want to aim for is is around it's it's between two and three generally speaking. Um, if uh, the maximum mass ratio that you would aim for is four after that it's diminishing returns and you really don't want you just should add a new stage. So you, you're not really aiming for mass ratios of higher than four. Um, but yeah, let's just get this into orbit, uh, get this contract fulfilled. Let me just quickly take a look at how much the contract is worth to make sure that we're actually getting into positive ter territory with this launch. We're going to return some of it back, but let's just say 10,400. Let's see if the contract is worth that much. Yeah, the contract is going to give us uh, 18,000. I'm just going to go for it and instead of redesigning that launcher. And then we'll uh, discuss what else we can do. And mainly aiming for the moon. Okay, so here we are with Jeb Kerman. So my, uh, I've gotten comments about uh, the benefits and drawbacks of 
uh, sending a scientist or engineer up in the space. I'm just going to stick with Jeb for now, just for safety's sake, uh, for stability and all that. And I think that'll be worthwhile. Okay, so Jeb is ready to go. And uh, first, first launch in like 10 days for me, so a little bit nervous, even though this is like the easiest thing in the world. So here we go. Now, a few words. I mentioned that it takes 4,500 meters per second to get into orbit around Kerbin. Now, you could do that with less or more depending on how the thrust to weight ratio of your craft is and how you do your pitch maneuver. But uh, the point is that the actual orbital velocity around Kerbin is about 2,300. So, what you're actually wasting by fighting against gravity and also getting through the atmosphere is about 2,200 meters per second, which is a lot. And which should give you an idea that really launching off of a place with no, no atmosphere or less gravity is, is a lot easier. And you don't have to deal with the kind of uh, losses that you deal with launching off of Kerbin or, for that matter, Earth. So, uh, and that's also the reason why we uh, try and get away from the drag of the atmosphere and the pull of gravity as quickly as possible, launching straight up. Because the, the quicker we uh, get through all that, the less of an impact you'll have on our launch. If you try and go horizontal very quickly, you'll find that you're taking much more than 4,500 meters per second to get into orbit, and of course that's not good. Now what affects specific impulse and uh, exhaust velocity is what fuel you're using and the shape of the nozzle as well, but mainly what fuel you're using. And so you're, uh, you have high performance fuels and then there are fuels with other properties that people like. Uh, and so th that distinction doesn't really occur in KSP right now, but there are mods that will give you that. Uh, the mod in question is real fuels, which will give you actual fuels that are used in rocketry. And those will have different properties. And that will be reflected in their efficiency, the exhaust velocity. Okay, that's the end of our first stage. Second stage. So you can see our orbital velocity is already 1,200. And we know that we've got about uh, 2,300 meters per second of delta V in this. So we've got plenty. In fact, we could probably transfer to the moon. Uh, though getting back, uh, it would have to be some sort of free return trajectory. In other words, we would be in a trajectory where we're not getting into orbit around the moon. So that's not optimal because we do in that contract that we have, uh, we would get a better, we, we would fulfill a part of that contract by, uh, by getting into orbit. So we do want to get into orbit. We haven't picked up that contract yet, so we, we'll just hold off until we finish this one. Okay, I'm just gonna hang out here. And while we're here, I might as well start talking about the the possible maneuvers here. So I'll, I'll, I'll start off on the maneuvers. We talked about the vectors and delta V in the previous episode. And so this is the prograde vector, the little uh, yellow marker here. And so if you want to continue going in the direction, continue burning in the direction that you are currently going in, that's the one you point at. And then of course on this side here, this is the radial vector. And this will point you towards or away the from the planet. So you can see this direction is away from the surface and that's the way we s start out pointing. Though at the beginning that is our prograde vector. Uh, this is the retrograde vector opposite of the direction that we are currently going in. And then here is the negative inclination vector, the uh, negative normal and that is to change your inclination, which means tilting your orbit north or south. And in this case, it'd be south. And if we wanted to tilt our orbit north, we would aim north, which is that vector there. Okay, 
but mainly you want to go with this. Now, I'll talk more about maneuvering later, but basically you're you're going in a straight line at any given time. Here right now we're going in a straight line like this and then when we reach apoapsis we're going in a straight line like this. The reason that our orbit is curved is of course because Kerbin is constantly pulling us in this direction towards its center. And so there's a constant acceleration in that direction which makes our orbit curved. And this has interesting effects. A, a lot of the stuff I talked about in the previous episode was in free space well, once you have Kerbin here, you are not in free space. And we'll talk about how to calculate the orbits at a later time. For now, all you need to know is that burning at the prograde vector lifts the orbit on the opposite side. And burning in the retrograde vector will drop the orbit on the opposite side. And so, and then the radial vector will sort of skew the orbit uh, so that well, anyway, we will do a maneuver episode. Let's just focus on the contract at hand, which is to transmit or recover scientific data from space around Kerbin. Let's grab some scientific data. I've already done the crew report, so I can't do that. But we can recover this science for 15, and then the contract will also give us an extra one. So the microgravity has greatly affected the growth of crystalline structures. Loose orbits are uh, loose objects are also flying around the bay in a very messy but fascinating way. So let's keep that data. Now, like I said, if you want to drop your orbit, you burn retrograde and you will drop the orbit on the opposite side. But we don't want to drop our orbit here in the dark and away from the KSC. We want to drop the orbit on the side with the KSC. So we time warp and wait until we're on that side and then burn retrograde. You'll notice that if you're pointed prograde on one side of the planet, when you reach the opposite side, you are pointed retrograde. So that's very convenient. Now, the planet rotates, as I, I often forget. Uh, and so in order to compensate for that, and also for the drag of the atmosphere, I usually aim for this peninsula here for the retrograde point, which means that I want to start retroburning here if I want to hit the KSC again, which I do because we're going to be getting the maximum value for our craft if we do that. So I'd say about 35 kilometers might be a good periapsis. What are we at here? Ooh. Our orbit was a little bit more skewed than I normally have it. Hmm, that's not good. It might not be too bad, but not exactly the way I wanted it. Probably still going to land a bit short. I wonder if we could do one of these. So, let's say I wanted to hit that one. I could do a ret uh, an inclination burn right now to turn our orbit south. Okay, well, let's, let's try that. We've got to bring him down anyway. So here, what you want to do is, if you're going to do an inclination burn, do it at the equator or where you're crossing your target's uh, orbit. So right now we're at the equator for Kerbin, and that's a great, and of course we launched that way so that we'd stay at the equator. So any given point will be fine for an inclination burn. And so I'm going to turn south using this inclination burn, normal burn, which is not the most efficient thing to do, but but if we can hit that point, that would be great. And do a crew report there. You'll remember that doing an inclination burn does affect your your velocity. It does have a minor effect, not like a prograde burn does, but that's why our periapsis has increased. So there is that effect, and I think our apoapsis probably increased as well. Okay, well, it looks like we're pretty much lined up with that thing. Let's see if we can hit it. Not working quite, quite right. Okay, this is not going to be realistic, but I'm going to flip around. Prograde.
Woo, okay, it's forcing me the other way. Uh, got lots of nice torque in this, but... Ah. I don't think we're going to be above 18. Let's see. Right now, the atmosphere is forcing me in this direction. I can't do too much. Okay, uh, crew port. Okay, we got survey data. All right. Well, let's keep that. Okay, so we're not going to hit the KSC, but we're going to be reasonably close. And at least we, we fulfilled that. Yes, we did. Wow, amazing. Okay. So now, while we're waiting for this to go down, let's see how much delta V we had left. So, calculator. Oh, but let me let me get a look at our total mass here. Two point six seven. All right. So calculator, and now we've got forty three units of liquid fuel. So forty three divided by ninety. That's 0.47, let's just call it 0.47, round down, tons. Okay, so 2.67 divided by 2.2 .2 is 2.67 minus 0.47. So that's our mass ratio. And parachute deployment looks good. LN of 1.21, those that. Multiply by, we'll use the vacuum ISP equals that times 9.81 740 meters per second now I said we needed 850 to uh, get to the moon minimum and uh, 900 as a buffer so but that's just on uh, going there and knocking into orbit sort of thing so this is pretty good so far we could do a lunar flyby with this uh, we used a little bit of the fuel in order to uh, get back down again. We don't technically need to do that, um, and you know, to get back down and also aim at the at the point that we were trying to do to fulfill the contract. So we don't need to do that. Uh, we could just uh, have the atmosphere bring us down wherever, and as long as we're not aiming at a particular point, we could do a flyby of the moon with this particular launcher. But perhaps we can do something a little bit more efficient with the launcher instead of going with this configuration let's we'll, we'll talk about that and we'll pick up that moon contract uh... pod's gonna flop out Ooh. ouch i should have put SAS on you guys are all gonna tell me that i should have put the SAS on and you're right we should have put SAS on oh man the science got destroyed Oh well. Um, darn. Okay, well we fulfilled that thing, which wasn't worth as much. Let's just recover this. Okay, so we got one science. All right. Um, we recovered some funds, but clearly uh, a, a failed mission. Let's go to the little uh, research center and let's see what we can pick up, though. Um. I really want small engines. That would really help. More science would help too. But that's 90 science. We can't get that yet. Probe parts. You know, maybe we should do stuff with probes. I think I think uh, some experimentation using probes are is in order. Okay, let's do that. Unlock probe parts. So this is the this probe core is a state put nick mark 1. It doesn't have any uh, torque in it so it's hard to control and we've got a reaction wheel uh, I'm not gonna unlock uh, anything else just yet let's let's ex examine whether this is actually controllable or not and then we'll move on from there using probe cores does have an advantage over man missions in that it's much lighter but it doesn't give you the same control options in fact it's basically like not having a pilot so it's a lot harder to control and you're probably going to want one of these little reaction wheels. So we've got the Stay Put Nick and a reaction wheel. Combined, they're only 0.1 tons. But uh, that's about as much controllability as... You, I mean, it's not going to be very easy to control, unfortunately. But 
that does give us a benefit in terms of how small a rocket we can build. And so we're going to try to science junior in orbit again. And this time we can potentially use a single stage system. Let's see. Let's see if we can do a single stage system and bring it all back. How about that? Uh, probably this is going to be a recipe for disaster though. Let's see. So what's the mass of this? Let, let's work backwards. We've got a mass of 0.6 tons. Okay. So let me show you how to work backwards if that's possible with calculator. Okay, so 0.6 tons. But what we need is 4,500 delta V to get into orbit, right? So 4,500 and then we are going to use the same launch engine which had uh, 320. Let's just be conservative with the 320 uh, specific impulse. So let's divide by 320. Oh no, sorry. Divided by 320. Okay, equals. Okay, divide that by 9.81 equals. Okay, so that is the ln of the mass ratio. And what we want to do is e to the 1.43. Uh, um, well, that's good enough. Okay, so we need a mass ratio of 4.19, which is pretty heavy. But we, we've only got a 0.6 ton payload. So that's what we're aiming for as far as the mass ratio is concerned. It's a little bit tricky to try and figure out how much fuel you need based on that because the fuel tanks each have their own empty mass and the engine also has a mass so we can't do it quite simply but it gives you an idea of the order of magnitude we're talking about and whether it's doable and four a uh, mass ratio of four is doable so we can aim for that let's just say that we use a uh, standard uh, just a five tank configuration like we had on the first stage before and then we have one of these LV T30s and then we have some extra parachutes because we want to try and bring it all down safely let's let's try and bring it down horizontally perhaps maybe that'll be safer what's the let's say we're totally empty and I want to find the center of mass. Ah, uh, the center of mass is all the way down here. So what we will need is more parachutes up top to counterbalance. Ooh, the parachutes themselves have quite a lot of mass. Uh huh. Well, okay. Now let's go to the calculator. So. 13.7 divided by 3.7 is not quite enough. Hmm. Let's see how close we are to 4,500. So, ln of 3.7, which is the result of that, k okay, times 320 times 9.81. That's pretty close. We could probably get into orbit with that. Uh, let me show you why. Uh, remember, we were conservative all the way through. And really, this engine has a vacuum ISP of 370. And if we take the difference here, let's say we go between 320 and 370. So we're talking about 345. So when we bring up calculator again, let's do the calculation with 345. So it's then times 345 equals that times 9.81 equals yeah I think that's that's tricky but I think we can do it let's try it let's try it with this single stage with all the parachutes and see if we can bring it down safely it will be an interesting experiment a costly experiment but but maybe we can manage it maybe I should put a decoupler in the middle there so just as an emergency thing if I don't think I can land it all safely okay then we'll at least get the science hopefully maybe alright that changes our numbers a little bit but not too much I don't think okay so this is uh, uh did we do OV for orbital vehicles no OS okay so it's OS2 alright let's try this out 
Sorry for not trying to get to the moon in this episode. We'll have to save that for the next episode. I guess I'll have to delay maneuvering for a little bit more. Oh yeah, no SAS modules. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, let's go. So this is just an experiment on my part. I'm seeing how well I can control this without the SAS and without Jeb's help. Oh, electric charge is a problem. Okay, I want to turn a bit, but I'm afraid of what it's going to do. Oh. Let's... Spin stabilizing is a thing, by the way, but I'm not doing it very well. Did it say from orbit or in space? From space. So if we don't make orbit, it's still okay. It's just that we're not going to get full value for a return. Yeah, I've lost too much delta V because I wasn't uh, pointed exactly right. Maybe we'll make orbit, maybe we won't. And there's the electric charge problem. Now the engine can recharge us. Oh, whoa, whoa. Maneuvering takes a lot. Hmm. Okay. First things first. We are now in space and I want to do the science. Oh, come on. Uh, I don't have enough electric charge, I don't think. Okay. So we're sort of stable here but I, I turning to prograde vector probably will mean losing all of our electric charge Let's see okay recharge using the engine it's probably not good enough Okay, I'm just going to bring her back down, because we need battery otherwise. Going to let it drift a bit to the retrograde ve vector. Really would have liked to hit land instead of water. Maybe you can aim for that area, but I don't think so. It's such a tiny sliver of land there. Oh, this is totally wrong. Wanted the top parachutes to go first. Okay, first parachutes. First parachutes. Okay. Tough to say what's going to happen when the parachutes fully deploy here. Gonna add thrust so that I can recharge the batteries a bit. Okay, parachutes deployed, but they're not doing what I expected them to. I thought we would get this horizontal. Come on. Oh, I don't have enough control. Darn it. Uh, this is probably gonna be destroyed if I leave it like this, huh? I can't stand, I can't send the staging signal. <sighs> Sometimes. Okay, well, let's see what happens. Probably lots of death and destruction. Well, not death, just destruction. Okay, I'm gonna try and recover as soon as possible if... to avoid flipping. Okay, I think I made it. <laughs> that thing would have been destroyed in a few seconds, I'm sure, but... Uh, uh, quick use of the recover vessel button, always helpful. Okay, so we got that done at least. Uh, 15 science, we got 62.9% of the value of the craft back. Not great, but okay. Um, yep, but uh, 
and it didn't get into orbit so that was sort of a flaw in the whole plan let's quickly take a look at a tracking station because I think we have some debris to pick up as well we've got the debris from this thing let's recover that okay that probably added something to our total uh, that's still showing one but there isn't any okay alright so well I hope you enjoyed this coverage of the rocket equation and I'll try and talk more about it and uh, you'll see me use it I'll bring up calculator every time I try and do a delta V calculation but uh, yeah this is, I think unless there are questions that I think I need to cover if you guys have any questions about it uh, put it in the comments below and I'll try and remember to cover it. It's tough to know whether I've really uh, gotten all the key points and explained it properly so if there's any confusion please let me know uh, otherwise uh, didn't really do what I wanted to do I really wanted to explore the moon but we will pick up that contract we will pick up that contract yes and I will aim for it in the next episode. We have seen from our Delta V calculations that we're not really too far off with the crude capsule in terms of getting a Kerbal around the moon to fulfill this and this. And as long as we get the advance, and, and we've got the advance already, and we fulfill these two, that's 18,000 funds. And our rocket costs uh, less than that. We, we do it for about 10,000. So we'll be uh, good to go on that, and we'll get 18 signs from that. And so that will be all good. And hopefully that will get us further along in terms of things. The visual survey, I'm going to have to think about how I do this EVA report considering the failure on the previous attempt. All right. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.